please welcome Tony Linder. In 2014, I was driving home from work, and I called my dad. <clears throat> I was really excited to tell him I had just received an offer to join a relatively new startup here in Lincoln. Now, nothing against my dad, this isn't some anti-father talk, but him and I come from different generations. <clears throat> See, he was raised on the notion that you find stability in a job, you work your way up the ladder, and you be loyal to the company that's investing in you. He couldn't understand why I was willing to take a leap into the unknown, into this relatively new startup. But, as I had started to become more and more comfortable with my role, I started to become more and more uncomfortable with where it was taking me. I got a couple of people in the front row that can verify that, by the way. AK, I didn't really like what I saw above me. <clears throat> I now realize that what I had was feeling was a sense of apathy. So I started to look around, and I wondered, what else is out there? Do I want to be in sales the rest of my life? Should I go back to school? Probably not, because I still haven't used the degree that I went to school for, so. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> that, like I said, that sense of apathy reignited my curiosity. Thankfully, the butterfly effect was already in motion, so I picked up my ladder, I carried it across Lincoln, and I joined this phenomenal company called Huddle. Yeah, there's a couple Huddleys in the audience. Give it up. <laughs> now, the title of this presentation is meant to be clickbaity. <clears throat> what it means is sometimes these opportunities, these new opportunities that present themselves, require financial sacrifices. And my point here is, do not let money be the reason that you don't uh, pursue a great opportunity. Unless you're a nonprofit, you can do that. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm also fully aware that not everyone has access to the same opportunities, and that everyone has very unique roadblocks on their career and in life. But that doesn't mean you have to accept stagnation. In fact, wherever you're at in your career, from unemployed to entry level to founder, we all have choices. And while the forks in the road are unique to each of us, we do have a choice, and we are in control. And it's our responsibility to take control of both our career and our life. Those choices, however, are not always, always smooth sailing. <clears throat> and I've had my fair share of peaks and valleys. We've all been there, right? At the peak of Mount Stupid, where ignorance is bliss, and we think we know it all. Uh, we're young, we're naive, we're probably young in our careers. And it gets hard, and we want to give up. But we don't. We climb the slope until we reach the plateau. I eventually reached a new plateau in my job at Huddle, and that sense of curiosity was reignited. This time, however, I was even more unsure of taking yet another leap into the unknown. I remember the feeling of starting over, that incompetence. I remember being in that valley of despair. This time, however, I had some help from friends and family, and they reminded me to take a look back and reflect on the journey, and remember where it started and where I am now. And not to be afraid of the descent, but to look forward to the new climb. But don't get me wrong, I am not immune to the peak of Mount Stupid. I mentioned those Hudleys in the audience, they can verify that one. I continue to have imposter syndrome on a weekly, if not daily basis, <clears throat> and a constant fear of letting my team down. This time, I realize, though, I don't have to do it alone. In fact, none of us have to make the climb by ourselves. There are more than enough people out there that are willing to help us and make the climb. In fact, people hike the same mountains over and over again just for fun. Now, I'm not telling you to leave today and quit your job tomorrow. In fact, I hope my superiors didn't just label me a flight risk. I actually think my boss might be here. <laughs> what I'm telling you is to be curious. And I know you can be curious because as kids, we were curious. We were curious about everything. We questioned everything. As adults, we tend to lose that curiosity. We don't have time for it, right? We have our own kids. We have our own responsibilities. We have bills to pay. Where do you find the time to be curious? Well, every day. Be curious about your surroundings, the people who surround you. Our curiosity is what leads us to find a new passion, to develop a new skill, to learn something new about our job, or most importantly, in my opinion, we might learn something about somebody else and, as Justine said, develop a new perspective. Have you ever thought about your life or even your career as a playground? As kids, we did. We saw all kinds of fun and interesting and challenging things going on. But back then, we weren't afraid to investigate. The big bonus of that investigation all of those amazing people, with each with their own perspective of the world. Now, I don't know if I talked as fast as Steve, but I do talk pretty fast. So I'll give you a quick summary here. We all have choices, <clears throat> and we're in control. It's not always easy, but stick with it. You'll figure it out. Just don't do it alone. And if you're wondering how to get started, try reigniting your curiosity. You might be wondering how that 2014 conversation with my dad ended up. <clears throat> and again, I have a great relationship with him. I would not be the man I am today without him. But he had told me, just be grateful for what you have, and don't try to change the world. Now, my response was rather haste, but one that I'll never forget. 
I said, well, Dad, that actually just might be the difference between you and I. Some of us are just curious enough to change the world. Thanks, Lincoln.